Hello, my name is Nick Diego and I'm the developer of Blocks and Blocks Lite. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of Blocks Lite and how to use it. Okay, so Blocks Lite is a free WordPress plugin that is a simplified version of the premium plugin Blocks. Both Blocks and Blocks Lite are designed specifically for users of the Genesis framework and allow you to easily add content to your website. For those that are not current users, the Genesis framework is a theme framework developed by the company Studio Press. I personally have no affiliation with Studio Press, but have used Genesis for a really long time, and it's a great product. And from using it, um, felt that Blocks and Blocks Lite could be a great asset for other Genesis users. Now it is important to note that Blocks requires Genesis to work. So as you can see here, we have Genesis installed. And if we go to the front of the site, we can see that we are running the base Genesis theme. Now this works with all Genesis themes, but we're just going to use the base theme for this demo. So now we're going to assume that Blocks Lite has been installed. And we're going to go to our plugins page. And on the plugins page, we are going to activate Blocks Lite. Once activated, you will notice that we now have a new menu option called Blocks Lite. And the first thing you'll probably want to do is look at the settings page. The first settings page is general. On this page, you can determine who can use blocks by adjusting the permission settings. We have two types of blocks, both global and local. I'll cover those in a bit. But here you can decide whether you want admins to use it, or admins and editors, or admins, editors, and authors. Um, then under local blocks, you determine what pages on your website can use local blocks. Um, here we have pages and posts. If you had any custom post types, such as purchases or products, you would see those here. This demo site doesn't have any, so we don't see any. Next tab is defaults. Uh, right now we just have defaults for position. Uh, this applies default positioning uh, to blocks. Now when you click on here you can see you have a whole bunch of options. These correspond to Genesis hooks. Um, every Genesis theme comes with Genesis hooks and they correspond to different areas on your website. Uh, so here we have Genesis after header selected. Now Genesis hooks might be familiar to some, but maybe not everyone. A great resource is Genesis Visual Hook Guide. So you can do that by searching in Google. And you want to click on the first link here. Now this site was not developed by me, but it gives you a really good understanding of where the hooks are located on the page. Now each one of these hooks are places that you can add a content block. Genesis hooks are standardized across nearly all Genesis themes, which really gives Blocks and Blocks Lite the power it needs to add content anywhere on your website. Now, we also have a couple other options for priority. And remember that these are just default settings, and you always can set position on each individual block. The final two tabs are styles and miscellaneous. On styles, you can add uh, global classes and you also can add some custom CSS. Now, finally, we have the option to disable default CSS. Blocks Lite includes very minimal styling. The goal here is that um, Blocks will inherit the styling of your theme or allows you to add your own styling. However, if you want to disable the default styling, you can from that checkbox. Now you can also disable it uh, individually on each block. And finally we have our miscellaneous tab where you can change the meta box title for local blocks. And you also can disable those annoying marketing notices um, that come with Blocks Lite because it's a free plugin. Okay, so let's hop into some examples to check out what Blocks Lite can do. Okay, on this first example, we're going to be using a local block and we're going to be adding some raw content. Remember from our settings page, we had both local and global blocks. This will be a demonstration of a local block. Now, a local block is one that can only be added to a single page. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a local block to a post. 
we're going to head on over to our post page and you'll see that we have a demo post all set up. Now you also see over here that we have a column for local blocks and neither post here have a block. So we're going to go to edit. Now you can see that we have some demo content and as you scroll down we have a new meta box called local content blocks. If you remember from the settings you can change this title if you wish. Now we're going to click to add a content block. Now you can add as many blocks as you like on a page. So what we've added one here. We're going to give it a title. Now this title is just for you. It doesn't really have any front-end implications. Now for this example we're going to be adding a call to action to the sidebar of this post. And remember that we are adding raw content so we're going to keep the content type the same. For this demo I've prepared some demo HTML that I'm going to paste in here. This raw to content box can really accept anything, from scripts to PHP, anything. And these checkboxes down here allow you to toggle functionality, such as including short codes, enabling PHP, and you also have the option to disable all markup. On the next tab, we're going to configure the position. Now you can see here that we have our default position, the Genesis after header here, but we also can select custom. That's what we're going to do. Now we're going to scroll down to the Genesis sidebar. And again, if you ever need help, you can go back to the Genesis visual hook guide by searching for it in Google. Next, we're going to go to style. And for right now, we're going to keep the style settings the same, but we'll edit these in a bit. Finally, we're going to go to update to publish our new block. Once updated, we're going to click view post. And over here on the right, you can see that we have our call to action. Now it doesn't look very good, so let's head back to Edit Posts to adjust the styling on the block. Now we're going to scroll down to the Style tab. And under Style, we have the option to add some custom block CSS. Now there's a selector here with an ID and this will allow us to specifically target our block. First thing I want to do is remove the text decoration on the buttons link. So we're going to set that to none. Next we are going to take the subtitle which is a paragraph and we're going to add some margin to the top to make it separate a little bit from the button. It'll look a little bit better. We'll go to 5px margin. Now finally we want the whole button and subtext to be centered. So we're going to take the ID of the whole block and set the text alignment to center. And now that that's finalized we are going to publish again or update and then we are going to take a look at the updated post. And as you can see, we have a centered button with no underlining and a nice amount of margin between the subtitle and the button itself. Now you might be thinking that this isn't very exciting because we could have added this call to action easily with a widget to the sidebar. But remember, this call to action can be moved around anywhere there is a Genesis hook, which makes it really powerful. You could add it to the footer, you could add it before your content, after your content, to the header, anywhere. So now that you've seen how a local block works, we're going to head on over and take a look at an example with a global block, which honestly is far more interesting than local blocks. Okay, in this next example, we're going to be adding a static image via a global block. Unlike local blocks, global blocks can be added to multiple pages on your website at once. So in this example, we're going to be adding a global block to a number of pages. So if we head over to our pages section and we scroll down, we're going to be focusing on three pages. Test page, subtest page, and sub sub test page. Now the setup of this example is that we're going to be adding a static image to the page. Now this page has no featured image. Our subtest page, as you can see here, does have a featured image of an alliance. Now our last page, the sub subtest page, again does not have 
any featured image, which you can see here. All right, now we're going to start by adding a block. So we're going to go to all global blocks, and you can see here we currently have two set up, but we're going to add a new one. Again, uh, similar to local blocks, you can add a title here. This has no impact on the front end. It's just so you can keep track of what everything is. Under content, we're going to select static image. There'll be a bunch of options here. The first is the image type. We're going to select featured or custom image. This option allows us to do some interesting things. So if we selected featured image, wherever this block showed up, it would try to pull the featured image of the page. Now if it didn't have a featured image, nothing would show up. If we selected custom, it would show the same image on every page. If we select featured or custom, it will show the custom image on pages without a featured image, but will show the featured image on pages that have it. So now that we selected this option, we need to select our custom image. For this, we're going to select uh, this deer in the field. Now we could set a title, an alt tag, uh, select the image size, choose an image link, caption, and set as a background. We're going to set as a background here. Here's a look at the image link, but we're not going to set it for this demo. And we're going to move on to the position tab. Here we're going to select custom, select one of our Genesis hooks. We're going to select the Genesis before content sidebar wrap. And you see if we hover over it, it gives us a little tooltip there. Finally, we're going to go to the location tab. And you can see we have some options here. We can either show it on every page, we can show it on selected pages, or hide it on selected pages. Since we want to show this block on those three pages we indicated, we're going to select Show on Selected. Next, we need to choose from the next list. So we're going to select a single page because pages are single pages. From the single pages, we're going to select Selected Single Pages. Now we want to choose Pages. From Pages, again, we want to select Selected Pages. And now we can see all the pages on our website. From this, we're going to select the three pages that we were interested in, test page, subtest page, and sub-sub-test page. Once we're satisfied with our location settings, we are going to select the Style tab. Now, on this tab, we're going to leave pretty much everything the same, but we're going to enable Wrap. A lot of Genesis themes use the Wrap selector. Then we're going to click Publish. Now to check this out, we're going to go back over to Pages, and we are going to start by looking at the sub-sub-test page. And we're going to click View, and there we go, we have our deer in the field. Now remember that this page didn't have a featured image. Now if we go to the sub-test page, we can see the lion, and remember this was the page that had the lion as the featured image. Then finally, the test page, which didn't have a featured image, here we go, here's our deer. Now this was a very simple example of using a global block to add uh, banner images to a selection of pages. But just think of all the possibilities there are with global blocks. You could add a site-wide footer, site-wide header, different content areas. You could add global PHP, CSS, or scripts. The options are really endless. So thank you for watching. I sincerely encourage you to check out Blocks Lite and the WordPress repository, or head on over to blockswp.com to learn more about the premium version blocks. Uh, the premium version includes far more options, different content types, visibility settings, and more. And there's also a link there for you to check out the Genesis framework if you're not already a user. Thank you very much.